For any of you who were expecting a review on the latest Ghost in the Shell film, I'm sorry, I can't do it. At least not this week. You see, I've boycotted the film. And if you'll hear me out, I'll give you some reasons why. Perhaps the most important aspect to boycott this film is the casting. At this point, I'm sure you've probably heard it many times, but whitewashing is a serious problem in Hollywood. I get it. Hollywood wants to sell movies with bankable stars, and currently there are no well-known bankable Asian stars. The closest we have is Rinko Kikuchi from Pacific Rim, who is hardly a household name. I could see an argument made against first-generation Asian stars because the English language is so different from their native tongue, and it's often a struggle for them having a limited understanding of the language, and that could have a negative byproduct and sound stereotypical. I don't like some more coffee. What? I don't understand. Which, to those less familiar with ESL, might view as racist. I had a boss from Vietnam for two years, and I can assure you, Jonathan Kikwan from Indiana Jones and the Goonies was not playing up his accent. At the time, he spoke five languages, so being a bit rough on one isn't really that egregious. Whitewashing is a problem that has been with America since the very beginning. Asian actors have almost always been thrown to the sidelines for a white person in yellow face or just replace completely. There are rare occasions, but you don't see it as much. Sure, in the grand scheme of things, Asians make up the smallest ethnic minority in the United States, and even smaller when you exclude East Asians. But when you have a story with a character of a certain race that is specifically non-white, why change it? Well, when the majority of Hollywood films feature predominantly white actors, it seems extra shitty when you actually have to change things to accommodate an actor. So, why the big fuss about Ghost in the Shell? Isn't race rather ambiguous in the anime, and isn't she like a robot or whatever? In many cases, anime characters are drawn with big eyes. That picked up ever since Tezuka drew his Bambi-inspired eyes on Astro Boy. Over the years, anime has portrayed characters in a similar style, and it's easy to see why people could view them as white. And there are several cases where anime characters are actually supposed to be white, like Full Metal Alchemist and Attack on Titan. In a way, it's great. It makes cosplay less awkward and draws in a larger crowd of people who could look similar to the characters. Because of this, it's easy to see why Hollywood executives would just want to Americanize the roles. But that's not exactly what they did. Ghost in the Shell still takes place in Tokyo. At least, I think it's Tokyo. From what I've heard, the movie doesn't really make it explicit, so it could be Hong Kong, it could be San Francisco or LA, Blade Runner inspired, I, I don't know, the movie doesn't make it clear. One thing that I will compliment the film on is the fact that their side characters are a rather mixed cast, but the main characters are still white, including the Major, who was originally named Major Kusanagi. But they simply decided to make her title her name to avoid controversy. Sadly, this isn't anything new, which is part of the problem. One of the first live-action anime blunders was Dragon Ball Evolution, a title which everyone expected to be based on the hit series Dragon Ball Z. But they decided to adapt the original series Dragon Ball instead. It probably would have sucked either way. There was also the M. Night Shyamalan disaster, The Last Airbender, which, unlike most other cases, hired no A-listers, so the whitewashing was absolutely pointless. But the movie sucks, so maybe that's a good thing. There haven't been many live-action anime adaptations so far. I think Mark Hamill's Guyver was the first, and then there was one based on the production IG Blood the Last Vampire, which actually had a Korean actress playing a Japanese woman, which is a lot less egregious than having a white person 
but there's still issues with that. Over the next couple of years, it seems that we're going to be getting a lot. A couple days ago, Netflix released a trailer for the live-action adaptation of Death Note, and Robert Rodriguez is working on Battle Angel Alita. Now, adapting the property and changing the racial dynamic is not always bad. For example, Edge of Tomorrow, aka Live Die Repeat, was an adaptation of the manga All You Need Is Kill, and Old Boy changes the Japanese manga story to take place in South Korea. Now, I will say Japan is an incredibly segregated country, and given that the United States is more ethnically diverse than a lot of countries, especially in cities like LA, New York, and Chicago, I think it's important for there to be an ethnic blend of characters in film. I think it's important to note that Edge of Tomorrow and Old Boy changed their stories and settings significantly to make them unique experiences, and were more inspired by the source material than being direct adaptations. As for Ghost in the Shell, it still maintains the Hong Kong Japanese-infused cyberpunk style, but dumbs down the animated original's existentialism for a revenge plot. Due to the fact that our culture is a melting pot, our sense of personal identity often gets muddled, and an existential plot exploring the concept of identity in a multicultural environment would be very interesting, but that's something you would have to commit to. This film doesn't look like it wants to commit to anything. Now, for a lot of people, the desire to see the movie is summed down to thinking Scarlett Johansson is hot. I get it. And this is just an excuse to ogle at her for two hours. These people don't really care about the franchise or its representation. This shouldn't be your target audience. As for the production design, it's frustratingly gorgeous. The production designers and prop makers did their homework. Sadly, the screenwriters, director, and producers obviously didn't. Nothing I've seen outside of the production design looks inspired, and the movie doesn't even have an interesting score. This movie simply looks like your run-of-the-mill January release, only this time it's an early summer blockbuster. I'm expecting to find this film in the bargain bin at Walmart in less than two years. Also, director Rupert Sanders essentially admitted to this being a dumbed-down take of the 95 film in an interview with Collider. It's hard, he said, because I don't think you could have taken the 1995 film and just remade it frame by frame. I think it's too philosophical and too introspective. That's why so many people like it, and I hope we've channeled that into the film, but hopefully built a bigger film around it so that people are excited in the cinema, but come out enriched in some way. I think so many times I come out of the cinema and I just feel like I've been battered over the head and my money has been taken. I haven't actually left with anything other than a few bits of popcorn stuck to my trousers. And I hope that there's something in here that a lot of work has gone into it. I've been in this for three years, and it's been a wonderful and exciting journey but I really hope people love it and get something from it. Well, my assumption is that while there will be hints of existentialism, the overall narrative will be much more streamlined. Look, if you can't take the risk with the actor, at least take a risk with the story. After all, most of its influence comes from Blade Runner, and that movie is far from your typical audience fare. Maybe you should have waited until Blade Runner 2049 came out, and then tried to ride on its coattails with a newfound appreciation for cyberpunk in cinema. As for the casting, many people will argue that, oh, the Japanese people are fine with it, which for the most part is actually true. That's partly because they don't see a lack of representation in their country, because 98% of their media is Japanese, so seeing a white face attached to one of their properties isn't too weird for them, especially coming out of the United States. Both the original manga publisher and the director of the 1995 film have spoken out defending the choice to use Scarlett Johansson. In the movies, John Wayne can play Genghis Khan, and Omar Sharif, an Arab, can play Dr. Zhivago, a Slav. It's just cinematic conventions, he explained. Yeah, those are even more messed up than this, but you're talking about historical figures and not fictional ones. 
But I mean, we can't even get a biblical movie with anyone Middle Eastern, so this is a continuing problem in Hollywood. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Mary Magdalene, starring Rooney Mara and Joaquin Phoenix, but that'll have to wait for another video. He went on to continue. If that's not allowed, then Darth Vader probably shouldn't speak English either. I believe having Scarlet play Matoko was the best possible casting for this movie. I can only sense a political motive from people opposing it. I believe artistic expression must be free from politics. Okay, first of all, Darth Vader was originally going to be played by acclaimed Japanese actor Toshira Mifune. But if that had happened, the entire trilogy would have been different. Also, what are you going to do? Make the major bad guys speak in an alien language so that the most pivotal moments in the entire saga lose their emotional weight because the actor is speaking in a different language behind a mask? That's dumb. Is this political? Yes. But it's to illustrate that Hollywood is forcing changes to the cast to appeal to the lowest common denominator, bankable stars. Max Landis made an argument in a video about the issue saying that there are no bankable Asian stars, which is true. But this is mostly because when a property like this pops up, they simply go, oh, who's a major star right now? Let's throw money at them, regardless of the, if they're actually right for the part. Have you noticed that audiences are starting to speak up about this? Have you noticed that this could hurt your box office? And no, this is not the Iron Fist complaint. Because I get that he was originally white, and they had an Asian actor in the lineup, but they decided to go by the comic character's original look. And the show did well, either because people are hate-watching it, or people are trying to marathon all the Defenders properties before that show comes out. I'm talking about Hollywood movies. Dragon Ball Evolution. Flop, Aloha, Flop, Gods of Egypt, Flop, Ben-Hur, Flop, and all these flop specifically because they were whitewashed. Why not take the risk and get an Asian actor? You could bank on selling its diversity, and you would have people defending it for its representation. Even if it sucked. Also, remember back when franchises introduced stars? Why not demand the casting directors actually do their job and pick the person best for the role? Now, it seems the filmmakers, in an attempt to appease the outrage, managed to do something worse. If you don't want any spoilers, skip ahead a couple seconds. Okay, so apparently the Major was originally a Japanese woman, but was killed and her brain was placed in Scarlett Johansson's body. Without her memories but with the ability to understand Japanese. What the hell, right? That's like a double F you. Audiences petitioned the studio to cut Scarlett Johansson out of the film as soon as it was announced, and again when a photo was released, and then again when the trailer was released. After all of that, Scarlett Johansson had the nerve to come out and say, I certainly would never presume to play another race of a person. Diversity is important in Hollywood, and I would never want to feel like I was playing a character that was offensive. Also, having a franchise with a female protagonist driving it is such a rare opportunity. Besides the fact that it was brazenly bullshit up to this comment, every article and credit, including IMDb, listed her as playing Kusanagi. Then it was changed to the major. Going back a bit, Rila Fukushima was added to the cast as an afterthought, due to the whitewashing criticism. She's not replacing Johansson at all, but she's listed as playing the red robe geisha. The actual woman playing the human Matoko, possibly, is Kaori Yamamoto, who I can't even find video clips of. I pretty much only have one photo of her, and there's next to no info of her involvement in the film. So I guess we'll see. I doubt she'll have a speaking role. And I get it, you're trying to retroactively fix the problem, but instead you're illustrating it more. 
Scarlett Johansson is the biggest star working today. And she was the most paid actor last year. But I feel this uninspired adaptation needs to fail in the box office in order to scare Hollywood away from continuing to do this shit. You want to know why you don't have any bankable Asian stars? Because the casting directors aren't picking them. And rather than hiring an actor based on performance, they'd rather get some star than take a risk on someone else. <laughs> well, that worked out spectacularly with Passengers, right? The only way for this to change is if audiences demand it. So what I suggest you do is whenever a major role calls out for an Asian actor, but they switch it to someone else, you wait a week to watch it. Just a week. That's all I ask. After all, opening week box office is where it really counts. The more this line of thinking is spread, maybe we'll actually get more Asian diversity in American films. Because, unless you grew up in the suburbs or a rural area, America's pretty diverse. And it would be nice for our films to reflect that.